I've warned you a couple times that it's particularly important to pay attention to whether the data is evenly spaced and whether it progresses in the independent variable by one unit or more than one unit. We're going to take a look at some data that shows us the number of premium Spotify subscribers in millions from 2012 to 2018. Now, especially because I just warned you, we probably ought to check to see whether the data is evenly spaced. We have two rows in our data. The top row is the year and the bottom row is the premium subscribers in millions. The top row has data 2012, 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2018. We're counting by even years, except for that middle year, that 2015. I'm just going to make a note to myself of what the spacing is using a little arc above the years. So the difference between 2012 and 2014 is two years. Between 2014 and 2015 is one year. Between 2015 and 2016 is one year. And between 2016 and 2018 is two years. So not evenly spaced data. We are going to start by still finding the rate of change to see if this data might be linear. Now our rate of change won't be quite as easy as it's been before. Let me go ahead and read you the data in the second row. So the premium subscribers in millions. In 2012, it was 4 million. In 2014, 10.5 million. In 2015, 22 million. In 2016, 36 million. And in 2018, 83.5 million. The premium subscribers is the dependent variable and the year is the independent variable. Let's start with our first two data pairs. To find the average rate of change here, we would do 10.5 minus four divided by 2014 minus 2012. What this is giving us is 10.5 minus 4 divided by 2, and that comes out to be 3.25. For my next pair, I have 22 minus 10.5, and that's over 1, which gives us 11.5. The next pair is 36 minus 22, all over 1, which is 14, and then 83.5 minus 36, all over 2 which is 23.75. Well, these average rates of change are all over the place. And because these are really inconsistent, I'm going to say this is likely not going to be linear. Let's move on and see if the data might be exponential. Now, when we calculate growth ratios, we don't take into account the fact that the years might not be evenly spaced. And for this reason, I'm only going to use the years that are evenly spaced. In other words, I'm just going to remove the data point 2015-22 from the set of data, leaving me with four pairs of data that are evenly spaced. Now they are evenly spaced by two, so we will have to pay attention to that later. Somewhere that's going to come into play. I'll let you think about that for a little while. Let's go ahead and find the growth ratios to start with. Our first pair is 2012 to 2014. The ratio would be 10.5 divided by 4 is 2.625. The next pair, skipping over 2015, would be 36 divided by 10.5. That's 3.429. And the last pair is 83.5 divided by 36. And that one is 2.319. While these are not perfectly the same, they are much, much closer together than what we saw in the test for linearity that we did. We can calculate an average for these three values, so 2.625 plus 3.429 plus 2.319, all divided by 3, to give us an average of 2.791. There's our growth factor. So our guess is that this is exponential. It's definitely not linear. Let's go ahead and declare the variables. Let's let t be the year since 2012. So 2012 is year 0. 2014 is year 2. 2015 would be year 3. 2016, year 4. And 2018, year 6. Let's use a capital S for the premium Spotify subscribers in millions. We know the initial value at t equals zero, that lowercase a is four. And we have something like a growth factor 
2.791, but that's over two years. And so we're going to play around with that a little bit and see if we can't figure out how to get that to fit the data properly. If you're not paying close attention, you might start with the model capital S of T equals four times left parentheses 2.791 right parentheses to the T. And I'm going to put a question mark like next to this because it doesn't seem like it should be that easy if this is a growth rate for two years instead of one year. Let's go look at the data and see how this particular model works out. Seeing this data plotted, it definitely looks like it has the potential to be an exponential function. I'm going to go ahead and include the model s of t equals 4 times 2.791 to the t power, and it doesn't match our data very well at all, which might not be too much of a surprise because we knew there was something going on with that 2 issue. This is where you might start to use your wits to help figure out what's going on here. Let's mess around with the model a little bit. What if we divide the growth factor by two? Well, that stretches the exponential function in the horizontal direction way past the set of values we have. That didn't appear to be a good plan. Maybe we need to multiply the exponent by two, and that just makes the graph a bit steeper. But what if we divide the exponent by two? There we go. That gives us a nice approximation for the data. While the model doesn't go through every data point, it is very close to the points that it does not go through. And it looks like a pretty good approximation for the growth we see here. So the change we need to make to the model is dividing that t in the exponent by 2. So I'm going to cross out the model I had written and make a new one. Capital S of t equals 4 left parentheses, 2.791, right parentheses, to the t divided by 2. Now this actually makes it kind of difficult to see what the true growth factor is because it's not raised to the t power. But we can do a little bit of manipulation on this using our amazing talents with exponents. Let me just rewrite this as 4 times left parentheses times another left parentheses, and then 2.791, right parentheses, to the 1 half power, right parentheses, to the t power. So you can see I've taken the 2.791 to the 1 half power and moved it inside the parentheses with the t on the outside. I can actually calculate that 2.791 to the 1 half power, which gives us 1.671, and then that's to the t power. And now I can actually see the growth factor for this. It's 1.671, or a growth rate of 67.1% per year, which is a very high growth rate. Just to recap, we can test for linearity by looking at the rate of change. We can test for exponentiality, looking at the growth ratio. And you want to pay very close attention to whether your data is evenly spaced or not. That's going to affect both the rate of change and the growth ratios if you're not paying close attention to it.